It's big, it's green, it's angry, and it's here to spread some bias. Hello you sexy beasts, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we start with the review, here are the usual disclaimers. What you are about to see in this video is not the final representation of the IS-7. This is a very early look at an unreleased and unfinished tank that is quite likely to have its stats changed before the final release. The purpose of this video is just to give you a general idea of what the tank might play like. And whilst I will give you the detailed stats that are available to me, take them with a grain of salt. Secondly, I am not going to be discussing Operation Summer or the Marketplace, that's a topic for another video. This is going to be purely about the tank itself. With that out of the way, this is the IS-7, Warfinder's newest and meanest event tank. The IS-7 started life as the Object 260 prototype in 1946, following on from the failure of the IS-6. The requirement was to build a heavy tank that could withstand the German 128mm Pac-44 gun as found on the Jagdsieger. Calling the final design a battleship on tracks wouldn't be too far off from the truth. The IS-7 ended up featuring armor that could even withstand its own 130mm cannon, derived from a naval gun, as well as a naval diesel engine with an output of over 1000 horsepower. Despite the tests overall being very favorable and the tank being quite liked by everyone involved, it was rejected and ultimately superseded by the IS-8, which we now know as the T-10. The only remaining IS-7 today can be found at the Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. In game, the IS-7 is a rank 5 gift tank without premium bonus, at a preliminary battle rating of 8.0, only available for the 2018 Operation Summer event. The tank has a striking resemblance to the IS-3 and the T-10M, with a pike-nosed hull and very rounded and flat turret. As always, we go for the holy trinity of tank warfare in the order of armor, mobility and firepower. In terms of armor, the IS-7 does indeed fulfill the requirement of resisting the Jagdtigers and more. The half front consists of sloped 150mm plates, both on the upper and the lower plate. The upper frontal plate presents an astonishing effective thickness of around 340mm. And even the general weak spot of any tank, that is the lower frontal plate, still features 260mm of effective thickness. The driver's port might look like a weak spot, and in fact it is only 100mm thick plates, but due to the extreme angling it still presents over 400mm of effective thickness. The third front has various plates, with raw plate thickness reaching up to 250mm at some points. Due to the heavy rounding and sloping, you can expect effective thicknesses of anywhere between 200 to over 500mm. Without pinpoint accuracy, even APDS shells will struggle to penetrate the turret. The side hull armor is not much weaker either. The upper plate is 150mm thick and sloped, providing well over 200mm of effective armor. The lower plate is also a classic Russian heavy trap, as it's not a flat plate but instead rounded. As you can see from this image, trying to penetrate the apparently flat side armor actually results in a very high bounce chance on the rounded 100mm lower plate. Your best bet is to aim for the area just above the tracks, where this plate flattens out. The rear of the hull provides between 60 to 80 mm of effective thickness. The massive engine will eat up APHG, hash, and heat projectiles, but a clear penetration from a high power solid projectile should be able to reach the crew compartment quite easily. This also applies to the 80 mm thick rear of the turret. Speaking of crew, the IS-7 features a total of 5, which includes what I presume to be two loaders. One crew, the driver, sits center in the front of the hull, with the other four sitting tightly together in the turret. Despite the high armor values, a penetrating hit should be devastating. On to mobility. Despite weighing in at 68 tons, the 1050 horsepower naval diesel engine provides the IS-7 with a power to weight ratio of 15.4 which would put it solidly in medium tank territory. This is also reflected on the overall stats. The IS-7 accelerates from 0 to 30 km per hour in 6.9 seconds, which is nearly identical to the Panther A we tested in the previous video. The indicated top speed is 60 km per hour, although it levels out at around 40 km per hour off-road, which still is quite quick. Even the reverse speed is incredible for a machine of this weight, topping out at 23 km per hour. This is a tank that can move very quickly in straight lines. I say straight lines because it does go a bit downhill from here. 
I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it generally is meant to be a weakness, but the i7 is terrible at turning. From a standstill, it took a whole 51 seconds to do a 360 degree hull turn, in a massive area given the lack of neutral turning as well. This is by far some of the worst I have ever witnessed. Rolling turning isn't much better, as even in third gear it still takes 24.1 seconds. This is a tank that loves wide open fields with straight lines, but suffers heavily in tight city combat. Finally, I gave it a lap around the Tank Polygon Test Track. Surprisingly, the off-road performance was actually able to compensate for the horrible turning performance, and the IS-7 finished the lap in just under 5 minutes, beating out even a fully upgraded Panther A by almost 10 seconds. As I've mentioned before, for being such a heavy tank, it does present medium tank mobility. Finally, firepower. The IS-7 features an adapted 130mm naval gun with an automatic assisted loading system and a whopping 8 machine guns. Six of these are 7.62mm machine guns, two of which are mounted coaxially on each side of the gun, two are fixed to the sides of the hull and another two are fixed to the back of the turret. Surprisingly, all of these are indeed modeled and do work. Although the hull mounted MGs do not have any kind of traverse or elevation even, and the back mounted MGs only fire when aiming directly behind where your gun is pointing, which consequently also results in the game constantly trying to turn your turret around. The remaining two guns are 14.5mm heavy machine guns, capable of destroying lightly armored tanks, tracks and cannon barrels. One of these is mounted coaxially straight above the gun, which means you don't have to compensate for convergence and the other is mounted quite high on the top of the turret. You would be forgiven to think that this would make for an excellent anti-aircraft defense, and while the top mounted MG can indeed point straight up into the sky, it has a terrible rotation and elevation speed, which means it's going to be nearly impossible to track any kind of aircraft that's not flying in a straight line towards you. The coaxial machine gun isn't much better either, due to the very limited elevation. That said, both the top and the coaxially mounted 14.5mm machine guns can be used much like the 20mm cannon on the MBT-70 to destroy the enemy tank's cannon barrel directly or from behind cover, an ability that is incredibly useful in 1 vs 1 close range situations. The main 130mm gun features a 7 round assisted loading tray that functions very similarly to an autoloader, while still retaining two loaders to refill the tray with ammunition. During those initial 7 rounds, the gun fires once every 10 seconds, which is below average for most guns at this battle rating, but incredibly fast for a gun of this high caliber. Mind you, after the initial 7 rounds are spent, it takes a long time to replenish the ammo to the tray. Your gun can only feed from ammo from the tray, and every shot will interrupt the reloading of said tray. I recommend sticking close to capture points, where you can reload the tray much more quickly if you are going to be fighting multiple enemies in quick succession. The i7 can carry a total of 30 rounds of APHE type APCBC shells, with up to 265mm of penetration and 195 grams of explosive filler equivalent at a mass velocity of 900 meters per second. Whilst this shell can't compete in terms of raw penetration power with HeatFS, APDS and APFSDS shells that you might find on enemy tanks within this BR range, it does make up for it in pure damage. With that amount of explosive filler, any penetrating hit is highly likely to result in a one-shot kill, if not crippling damage. But the gun handling isn't anything special, however. Contrary to some sources, the gun is not stabilized. The turret rotation speed is mediocre at best with 12 degrees per second stock, and the gun elevation range is terrible, ranging from just negative 3 to 15 degrees. As is the case with the mobility of the IS-7, the gun works just fine in wide and flat terrain, but it struggles in close quarter combat or hilly terrain. So, let's summarize the IS-7 then. It is indeed a very scary tank. At the first glance of the stats, it does remind a lot of the IS-6, but just better in every single way. The armor is stronger, the mobility is great, the gun is much better and it has not one, but two secondary machine guns that can be used to disable enemy guns. Without knowing what it is or what its weaknesses are, the IS-7 might seem a completely broken and overpowered tank. But having tested it and analyzed its weaknesses, I have my reservations. The armor is incredibly strong, yes. 
It is pretty much immune against any kind of AP or APHE shell. Even APDS might struggle against it. But it is also at battery rating 8.0 at the moment, which puts it just outside of 6.7 down tiers and into the 8.7 up tier territory, where it will often face heat FS and even occasionally APFSDS shells. Whilst the tank does have a healthy number of crew, they are packed tightly together along with sizable ammo racks, and any penetrating hit is likely to cause devastating damage. The mobility is once again great for such a heavy tank, comparing to or even surpassing medium tanks in many aspects. However, as we also found out, it doesn't like to turn very well, neither the hull nor the turret. This makes it rather vulnerable in close quarters, where it might be easily flanked if it doesn't have the space to use the amazing reverse speed to get back into cover. Given that the lower hull side is only 100mm flat in the right area and the crew is rather compacted, even lower tier flanking tanks can do a serious number on it. Finally, the gun. Ignoring the bad gun handling stats for a second, the gun itself is actually quite powerful and assisted by the secondaries. In close range, frontal 1 vs 1s, you can easily use the armor to bounce the first shot from the enemy and just take your time disabling the guns with your machine guns and find the weak spots to penetrate with the main gun, following up after 10 seconds if necessary. And that is against heavily armored opponents like an M103 for example. Against medium and lower tanks, the shell has more than enough penetration and explosive power to absolutely obliterate them. Unless you can disable the IS-7's gun on the first shot and avoid the machine guns damaging your barrel or tracks, it is not very recommended to go against this thing from the front. That said, the IS-7 gun is not stabilized and is at a disadvantage against uh, high penetration stabilized guns when on the move. 105mm L7 carrying tanks with heat FS should really not have too much of an issue against the IS-7 from the front much less so mobile tanks that can actually get onto its side. Even aircraft shouldn't fear the IS-7 too much. As long as you don't fly directly at them for an extended amount of time, the top machine gun simply doesn't have the speed to traverse quickly enough to catch you. Now, this is my own opinion and I might of course be totally wrong by the time the tank actually releases. After all, I haven't used it against actual players and the stats might be completely different by the time. But as they currently are, and from my own experience with the game over the past 4 years, I do not believe the IS-7 to be the completely overpowered and invincible monster that some people seem to make it out to be. But this is just one side. I do very much want to hear your opinions on the IS-7 in the comments now that you know more about the tank. Again, keep in mind that all of these stats and battle ratings and performances are preliminary and might or might not change drastically before it is actually put into the game. So don't grab your pitch force just yet if you believe the tank to be completely under or overpowered. Say what you would want changed instead, based on what we have right now. But in any case, hopefully you have enjoyed this preview of the IS-7. If you are new around here, do subscribe. I seem to be in another monthly burst of video making motivation right now, and that's usually when I put out the good stuff. But as always, my name is Michael Boom, and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky, take a deeper breath and give it time. You can walk the path among the lines. With your shattered frame of mind It's that you could always stay We can wait right here and play Until somehow you